Hey everybody, in this video I'm showing how I make my custom roofs and custom walls, though the general idea behind this is how to make any kind of custom scenery item for your building and place that around within the building as if it were just an in-game scenery item. So starting off with the walls as an example, I just want to quickly place an anchor point for my building. Uh, place a wall as a reference material for one very important reason. Whenever you're making custom walls or custom roofs or anything that you want to be able to copy around and um, use the grid to actually seamlessly make it larger or smaller, um, you want to make sure that it actually fits on the grid. And the only way to tell exactly whether it fits on the grid is to use a kind of reference material to know what the size of the grid is. In this case, it's a wall, so I just want to place a very quick wall on the ground here. And I want to make a very simple stucco wall. Just want to take this texture here, put it over the reference, and just copy the size and shape of that thing. And over here, rotate it just to get a slightly different texture. Make sure that it connects seamlessly, and that should be it. Now you can just remove the wall and place this around, and that's basically how you can get a custom wall. Now obviously you can get all sorts of combinations with this, the basic premise is just to get a wall reference in and place any kind of texture over it. Uh, you can very easily also just take a wooden texture, say for instance this Chief Beef Belief sign, I think it's a quite a nice sign and I actually want to use it for this building here. You can just place it right in there, sink it a little bit, it does have that very nice straight quality on the sides. Rotate it just to make sure that it fills the shape in and then you can remove the reference again and then it should seamlessly connect and you can make walls out of it. A few things I want to say about this. For one, don't be afraid of using any kind of object for this. You can sync just about every single object into a wall to make a custom texture, be it the back of this air conditioning unit or the wood from the pirate rigging. It really doesn't matter as long as it's a flat texture and it works for whatever kind of wall you want to make. As long as you get it in on that reference, you can just copy it around and basically use anything. Now I think you should also always remove the wall that you used as a reference, not just because it's a bit of a waste of space, because it will add up a little bit to the lag in your park for an object that you don't even see, which is quite annoying, but also because it might give you some Z-fighting if you are placing textures very closely over walls, they will have a conflict and if you zoom out you might start to see them flickering. So I always like to just remove the walls behind them. Sometimes I forget, but most of the times, basically, you want to get that stuff out. So that's for walls, but for roofs it's slightly more complicated. And the reason for that is that a roof should rarely, if ever, be perfectly on grid. You always want a roof to be slightly off the grid, kind of overhang over the walls that you're placing underneath it. And that seems like it doesn't really work because you do want to be able to make a small roof and copy that around on the grid to make any kind of shape or size of roof that you want with the very small piece that you created for the texture. But it might actually work and I'm going to show you how I do that with a few objects. Um, First one that I want to start off with is the sandstone supports for the brick roofs, which doesn't really make too much sense, but it can look pretty good in some contexts. Uh, now what's very interesting about this sandstone support is that it's about a quarter tile wide, so no matter how you place it, you can always copy it around and it'll always stay on the grid and connect seamlessly to the ones that are already next to it. Only if you have the quarter tile grid actually enabled, which at the time, we can only just place a sandstone column, and there we go, that's a quarter tile grid. So what I do with the sandstone thingy is to place it right down the middle of a roof piece like that. So the sun is being really annoying, but you can still tell what the exact middle is with the lines on the side here. Just kind of sink it into it, doesn't really matter too much, and basically just make that down all the way. I want to make a one tile wide roof here. Um, but like all roofs do, I do kind of want it to stick out a little bit on the bottom. So I'm going to add one more piece around here. That should finish it. And as soon as you've done that, you can copy this around. And because it's exactly centered, you can also rotate it and it'll just connect to the roof that you've already made. And that's how I usually make these brick roofs. Now, if you're kind of stupid like me and you want to make a red shingled or tiled roof, here's what you want to do, though I have to warn you beforehand. Don't do this too much or don't do it at all because you'll end up with many wasted faces that you don't actually see. 
and it will add quite a lot of lag to your park. Anyway, if you do want to do it, um, here's how to. Um, you basically want to take a door piece, which is this one right here, which has that red texture on the bottom of it, and that's what we're going to want to use. And to actually make good use of it, we're going to spin it around and sink it slightly into the roof like that, so that this piece is the only thing we see. And this is why it wastes a lot of faces, as you can see, and it's not very efficient, because you don't even see the rest of the door but it's still going to get rendered by the game and it's still going to give you quite a bit of lag. Um, also, you're going to want to place two roofs in this case, just because this thing is going to be pretty wide and quite annoying to make. Uh, so back to the door. The first thing that you want to do is just fill up the entire thing with door pieces. Make sure that there's not one very small spot of blue left. And this is going to take quite a while to place as well. But just place them like this. Uh, whoops connecting them as closely as you can because you don't want to have too many of these doors around until you're all the way at the end. Now obviously there is a big giant door connected to this roof piece um, so what I actually like to do is spin it around here and there because we're gonna have to spin it around for this corner to make sure that we don't have a door sticking out here and place that in there but what I also like to do is in the middle where you can just get a few ones with like a slightly different texture just to make sure that it doesn't look that repetitive. Now because we're lazy, you're going to want to just add this extra row in here. And after that, copy the entire thing. Make sure that you don't copy the roofs by pressing on them while holding control. And place it over there. And that's basically the entire reference tile filled with roofs. But it does look very boring and it looks very, um, very straight and terrible actually. So to get like a bit more of a natural shingle type texture to it, it never really ends up being that great. But at least it looks better than the mess that it is at the moment. I always like sinking a few of these into it, but a little bit higher just to give it some slightly different textures. Just kind of plop them wherever you want to. It's kind of random, but give it more of a shingle texture and make sure that the entire thing doesn't really look as on the grid. So uh, yeah, there's no real <laughs> technique or anything to this, just adding lots of random beams here and there. So now we've arrived at something which, with a lot of imagination, kind of looks like something that resembles a shingle roof, at least as close as we can get at this point, probably. And all you really have to do at this point is copy it around. I added the quick horizontal trim at the bottom just to add a bit of a trim to the roof and also cover up the roof that was the reference within it. And yeah, you can basically make any kind of size or shape of roof that you want to with this. One thing that I would recommend though, is especially if you get into larger roofs or you repeat them quite a bit, just randomly remove a few of those beams that you put in there just to make it all seem a little bit less strict and a little bit more random so that you actually do have less of a pattern in these uh, shingles on top of it. Now if the question is does it really look great, I'll have to disagree with that as well. It just doesn't really look that good but in the context of whatever kind of theme you're going for, it can actually work pretty well, even if the texture isn't really that perfect for it. If you do have the right text, if you do have like the right sort of general feeling or texture to it, and the right color, which in this case is quite important since it's really just about the only way to get a red roof in, it, it can at least be somewhat acceptable, I suppose, for Alpha 3. Until we actually get some different roofs. This is just about what we're going to have to do with this. Also keep in mind, we might be able to do all sorts of stuff with this kind of method in later alphas with more objects. But this is basically how it's done. Get a reference, make sure that it's on the grid, and build whatever kind of textures you want to on it. But please watch out with those unnecessary faces. They can really add up to a lot of lag in your parks. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.